So as we begin this fishing day, we have an absolutely beautiful pond. Look at this thing, it is gorgeous. I'm sure we got tons of big old bass in here and I'm ready to go with all of my rods and reels. And a lot of you guys I see out there do bring six, seven, eight, ten rods and reels out there to the pond. But uh, for a lot of us, that's not only unnecessary, it's also not even a possibility for a lot of us. And so I want to talk about my singular rod, reel, and line combo that I think is best for any sort of pond fishing scenario. My name is Tyler Anderson, and let's get started. How's it going folks? Welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. As always, I make it my goal on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video you watch. And I have been flooded with video suggestions of pond fishing, pond fishing, pond fishing. And you know, in my, my northern adventures this summer, I had my boat with me, didn't really have a whole lot of opportunities to make pond content. But now that I'm back down here in Texas, it's about time that I make some pond content. So I'm gonna make a video today that people have asked for, and that is what singular rod, reel, and line combo would I use for almost all bass fishing scenarios across the country, and that is this rod, reel, and line that I have right here. I'm gonna go over each individual piece of this combo, why I choose this for any bass fishing scenario, like let's say you just have one rod. A lot of you guys out there don't have a bunch of rods and reels like I do. For the bass boat type crowd like I am, I got tons of rod and reel combos. Um, but for you pond guys, you may only have one or maybe two or three rod and reel combos. And if you're only gonna bring one to the pond to walk around with and, uh, and catch fish, what is the one that I recommend? I'm gonna start with the rod that you need. You need a rod that can do a whole lot of different things, what's called all purpose. And one of the most all purpose rods of all time is the seven foot medium heavy. I'm gonna make a little bit of an adjustment to that rod length when it comes to the rod that I'm gonna choose for fishing in a pond, no matter where I am across the country. And I'm gonna increase the length by two or three inches to a seven foot medium heavy or a seven three medium heavy. And the reasoning for that is because I wanna be able to throw a wider range of lures, both of size and of weight. Let's say you picked a seven foot medium heavy. You could do a lot of things well on that. You could throw a Texas rig of any kind, any sort of crankbait of any kind, as long as you had you know, the line size to match it. You could throw any kind of moving bait, small top waters, really, really diverse set of lures. But the one problem you can't do with a seven foot medium heavy, at least you can't do well, is you can't throw big top waters and you can't throw lures around heavy vegetation and heavy wooded cover. And so the reason why I jump up to a 7.2 or a 7.3 medium heavy is so that I can have more leeway to throw lures like a big whopper plopper, a frog, and then of course you can throw on a seven foot medium heavy, but you're gonna have a lot more success with your hook sets and with getting fish in on a seven two medium heavy. The model that I have today is the Loose seven two uh, TP1 black speed stick, the seven two medium heavy. I love the TP1 black lineup. It's really affordable, at least in my opinion, just over a hundred dollars for this rod. And uh, just comes with a lot of cool features that a lot of other rods don't for this price point. And uh, like I said, seven two medium heavy is just a really good length to do a lot of different things really, really well. Could you throw smaller lures better on a seven foot medium heavy? You could, but especially when it comes to pond fishing, uh, I like to throw bigger lures, I like to throw lures in grass around uh, heavy cover, and that's where the seven two comes in, in, uh, in handy over the seven foot. So with rod out of the way, let's talk about the second most important thing, which is line. And so because you only have the opportunity to have one rod, you wanna have a line that can do it all. In my experience, the line that can do it all is 40 pound braided line not monofilament, not fluorocarbon. Even though most of my rods in my bass boat have straight fluorocarbon line on them, if you want the opportunity to throw heavy lures and top waters in your pond, throwing braided line is going to be the best way to go about doing that. And so in a pond like I'm fishing today, we have pretty dirty water. As you'll see from the catches here at the end of the video, the water clarity in this pond is pretty dirty. And so I can get away with throwing braided line and tying it straight to anything I want. It's not efficient to throw a crankbait on braid, but can you do it in this pond? Yes, you can. And across the country, you can actually get away with throwing braided line in a lot of ponds, as long as your water visibility is uh, a foot or less, I'd say. If you have more than a foot of water visibility, I would say you have to throw fluorocarbon. But the problem is you only have one rod. So I can't have a fluorocarbon rod and a braid rod. And that is where the leader comes into play. On this combo today, I have a 40 pound CR Smackdown braided line tied with a leader knot, if I can grab it in this wind here, to 15 pound 
fluorocarbon. You're probably not going to be able to see that on this clip here. But that right there is my leader knot, and I have about a two to three foot leader material that is from my braid to my fluorocarbon. That way, if I'm fishing in an area that has super clear water, I can still use my one rod and reel combo. I just have to change it up a little bit and throw that fluorocarbon with that leader. Now make sure you learn how to tie a leader knot very well, and you're making sure you're taking care of your line and not tying old line or line that got left in the sun for too long. You want to make sure that your leader material is very, very strong and fresh line. That way you don't have any issues because a connection knot is always uh, another opportunity for something to go wrong. And as bass anglers, we want to you know minimize the amount of things that can go wrong on the water. So that is how I go about having one rod and reel in line for any situation uh, because I can have a leader material. Uh, I usually do 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon from that 40 pound braid. Now the last part, of course, of this combo is going to be your bait casting reel. Uh, you know the reason why I saved this for the end of the video is because the reel is really the least important part. The, the two important things that I'm going to talk about when it comes to a pond fishing reel is that you want to have one that's in the sevens in terms of gear ratio. So not the eights, you don't need a super fast gear ratio, but also if I'm going to be throwing a top water, if I'm going to be punching, throwing a reaction bait, I want to have a little bit faster of a gear ratio than your average reel, which sits right at six, four to one. And so I have a BB1 Pro. It is a seven, one to one gear ratio. That is perfect for me for any sort of um, pond fishing activity, no matter what bait I'm throwing. And the second thing that's important to me about a reel is that it has a wide spool because when I'm pond fishing, sometimes in order to catch more fish than the guy that's next to you at a public pond with a lot of pressure, you're going to have to make longer casts out to those fish that have not seen as many lures as the rest of the fish. Um, or maybe fish that have seen so many lures, they've moved out to stop seeing fake lures. And so if you can have a wide spool and a longer rod, you can get a much longer casting distance than the guy next to you, and you're going to catch more fish through that. So that is why I choose the BB1 Pro, even though it is a more expensive of a reel. I would say for a pond scenario, if you only have one combo, spend way more money on your rod than you would on your reel because your reels are going to get way more trashed by pond fishing, uh, whether it's whether it's grass or laying it down in the dirt. Your reels are just going to get more beat up than your rod is. So the BB1 Pro is a little bit expensive uh, when it comes to pond fishing, but I have found that the, uh, the wide spool really helps with casting distance, which helps you guys catch more fish. So now that we've talked about the rod and reel combo, I say it's time that we show you guys some awesome fish catches from today's pond adventure. So if you guys are not subscribed to Tyler's Real Fishing, hit that subscribe button and enjoy these fish catches. There's one. I found them. Yes. There they are. There they are. Got it. That's a that's the biggest one of the day. That's the biggest one of the day so far. Oh yeah. Don't you come off, don't you come off. Come on, chill. Chill out, buddy. Chill out. Yes! There we go. Alrighty, first one on the chatterbait. First fish of many. There's one. All right. We have found where they are, boys and girls. Oh, that is fun. That is fun. Oh, he popped off. Dang it. He popped off. There's one. Got him. Yes. <laughs> Man, we got a jumper up in here, folks. We got a jumper. Jumper dumper do. Yahoo. Oh, you shook my worm. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Got him. Not a bad one. All right. There's one. Got him. Finally. Took me a while. Took me a while. Ugh. Gotta get these fish re-fired up, you know? Ugh. Bring it in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a fish on the structure bug. 
Boom. Awesome.